Hey everybody, we are teaching Sculptor VR, and this particular episode is all about bringing in images to use as references as you make your sculptures. So if I'm trying to make something that actually exists, I could bring in pictures of that thing to use as a reference as I'm making sculptures. Now this works best on the PC-based headsets and can be done on the Quest. However, at this time, I don't know a way of doing this on the PlayStation version. Although I hopefully you can let me know in the comments below if there are ways to do this. Now, bringing in reference images. I've got a couple of JPEGs that I'd like to use in this environment. So on my PC, if I look in my Documents folder, the moment I install Sculptor VR inside your documents, it's automatically going to create a folder for Sculptor VR. Sculptor VR. That's an R, trust me. Inside that folder, are a bunch of new folders, including one called Images. So I'm just going to add that here, Images. That's backwards. Images. Close enough. In this folder, any standard picture, like a JPEG, you put into this folder, it will automatically be usable in Sculptor VR. There are other folders here as well, and we'll be doing other lessons about bringing in models and things like that. But images allow you to bring a picture into your VR environment to use. Now what's important is it's not going to be part of the model. On a Quest user, if you can plug your Quest into a PC using the USB cable, it will show up like an external hard drive. And there's actually a folder on your Quest called Internal Storage. So instead of Docs, this would be Internal Storage, Sculptor VR, Images, and copying any pictures into here make them available. Let me clear this out. So we can see how this is going to look in the actual environment. So here I am in Sculptor VR. I am in the first layer, layer one. These pictures, since they're not actually part of the sculpture, they're all going to be bound to layer one, even if you have more than one. So here I am in layer one. We're just going to draw something to give us some perspective on this. Nice big spiral right here. On your main controller, the second to last button here up on top looks like a little mountain and sun, an image, a picture. When I click on him, anything you have in that folder will automatically show up right here. If you have too many, it'll actually add, I don't think you can see, there we go, it'll add left and right buttons to be able to scroll through all the pictures you have available. So here I am in my environment. If you click on any of those pictures, it is based on where your headset is facing. So I'm going to face that way. Point. Here is that picture. Now I'm going to face this way. Point. Here is that picture. They are part of layer one as far as moving it around. So if I change size and things, they would change with layer one if I lock them down. You'll notice all of these pictures have three buttons across the top. These buttons are how you control the picture itself. The move button, the one that's farthest to the left, Click your trigger and hold to actually move this picture around. You can see it's visible from both sides. And wherever you move it and let go, that's where it's going to put that picture. Move you over here. Move you over here. It only responds to your primary control. Any other control will be ignored completely. You'll notice I'm still on my painting control. But the moment I move over one of those buttons, 
it'll automatically take control of the picture itself. Now the lock will lock it to layer one as it is right now. So if I lock the top one, but not the bottom one, when I start moving layer one, the locked picture moves with the layer. The unlocked picture does not. That lets you set a picture in place in relation to the sculpture. Whereas unlock keeps it in relation to you and your headset. So as I move the sculpture, anything that's locked to the sculpture moves with it. Now it is locked to layer one. Not just because I'm in layer one right now, but because that's the way it goes. So if I make a new layer, layer two or 1.1, and I'm gonna color in pink, and then unlock the layers. Whoops. Key. So now if I move layer two, the pink is what moves. If I move layer one, everything moves. Except for him, because he's not locked. If I go to layer two, pink layer, and add a new picture, 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 and lock it. It's locked to layer one. I can move the pink without moving that picture. Now if I go to layer one and move it, that one is indeed locked to layer one. So your references images are always locked to layer one, regardless of what layer you're in when you bring them into place. Keep that in mind. But that does mean they're all together. So I can grab layer one and shrink it, and all the pictures shrink too. Come back here. Okay, pictures up to bigger size. Now I can unlock it, and it's no longer part. I can use move to move it around. The X button, whoops, it's backwards too. Stop that. The X button gets rid of that specific picture. Whereas on your picture controls, if I've got a bunch of pictures in here, we do have the button in here called clear. Clear. Clear removes all the pictures at once. So if you don't need your references anymore. Now by themselves, the picture, we can't actually resize it. We can move it around, but we can't make the picture bigger and smaller. So ideally what we'll do is we'll make layer one, whatever size we'd like to work with, and then lock the picture. Now as we change sizes, the picture will scale with the rest of that layer. Layer one and only layer one. But this means we can bring in a lot of different pictures, arrange them however we want, so we can use them as references as we make the different things. Or we could just keep them around to add to the sculpture. Maybe I want to make a room and put pictures on the wall. Here's an easy way to get pictures to put on the wall. Bear in mind, those pictures aren't part of the sculpture. So if I give this sculpture to somebody else and they don't have those pictures in their documents, they'll never show up. Even if they do have those pictures in documents, they need to add those pictures themselves for them to be there. These are reference images for your sculpting. They're not really meant to be part of the sculpture itself. Hopefully this gives you some new tools so you can make accurate representations of your favorite stuff. So if you want to make a spaceship from a TV show, you can fire up that TV show pictures and put them into your sculpture to use to, to uh, use as references. I hope this is helpful. I hope this is informative. Let us know if you have questions. Uh, subscribe to the videos themselves. But also let us know in the comments if you have questions or things you'd like us to do lessons on. 
We do these things on a weekly basis, both on Twitch TV slash Shameless Mayhem, but also archived on YouTube.com slash Shameless Mayhem. Have fun with Sculptor VR. It's a great virtual reality art program. Let us know about the sculptures you create. Have fun, everybody. We'll see you next time on Teaching Sculptor VR. What a handsome fellow. <laughs>